Hello, and welcome to the second video, Little Bits of ABE Tips in the Creating the Conditions for Belonging series on equity. Thank you for continuing the conversation with us. My name is Robin. And my name is Mel. Given the current social and political context of our world, we will offer a book recommendation that you can share with your students. It can guide your discussions, particularly around current events. Sharing stories and having conversations by using characters and literature to talk about issues provides a windows and mirrors experience while you create a brave space for students and teachers alike. As an anti-bias educator, you recognize that making space for regular, intentional, and age-appropriate conversations around social issues and current events is critical to our students' understanding of history and their own social identities. We will also discuss equity and its essential role in belonging. A lack of equity has a harsh impact on learners and educators. To be preventative and prepared, we will invite you to reflect on your own biases. We will offer an activity idea you can do with any age students to continue building the anti-bias skills they need to create a learning environment that fosters belonging. And lastly, we will recognize the ways in which anti-bias educators continually need to tap into their own resilient skills. Self-care is important to be able to meet the, de the demands of your work. So we will leave you with a self-care tip to try. One book in the AmazeWorks elementary curriculum that addresses equity and provides opportunities for countless discussions and activities is Intersection Allies, We Make Room for All by Chelsea Johnson, LaToya Council, Carolyn Choi, and illustrated by Ashley Seal Smith. While this book is in the fourth grade scope and sequence, it can be fitting for other grades to have discussions around identity and intersectionality. It is important that you read the foreword and a letter to grownups to yourself before you read this book to your students. Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw, who coined the term intersectionality, and the authors provide an important frame for why this book is necessary to teach. An excerpt from the letter to grownups explains, this book provides an introduction to the concepts of allyship and intersectionality for elementary school age children and their families using the simple idea of making room. Making room goes beyond allowing somebody physical space. It means acknowledging our complex identities as a source of power within classrooms, communities, and cultures, rather than treating differences as a threat, vulnerability, or a source of shame. Making room is stronger than ideas like respect and tolerance because it asks for a positive action from us rather than a minimal response. Along with the AmazeWorks lesson, the back of the book contains a page by page discussion guide to help you navigate conversations about the current event issues portrayed in the book. For example, one character in the book, Nia, talks about being frightened and singing the blues because of what's on the news. The image on the next page shows rows of police officers in riot gear. There's a lot that can be unpacked here, and it's an opportunity to talk about Black Lives Matter with your students. Our students are often more aware of what's happening in the world than we may think. They're frequently emotionally and mentally impacted by it, whether explicitly or implicitly. Yes, discuss injustice, like police murders of unarmed Black men, but remember to also highlight the stories of activism, hope, and justice. Never show videos of violent acts like police murders. At AmazeWorks, we believe that conversations need to include current events, perhaps now more than ever. Talking about some things in the news can seem intimidating because we may be afraid we won't have all the right answers. We may be afraid of a student making a hurtful or racist comment, or we ourselves haven't done our own work around our biases. You may not have all the answers, and that's okay. There are lots of tools out there to help you and your students to build an environment where respectful conversations can happen and to help you navigate the conversation when hurtful or racist comments are made. And it is up to you to continue to do your own personal anti-bias work. For more information and considerations regarding how to talk about tough topics with your students, see the article, Making Sense of It All, Teaching Current Events with an Anti-Bias Education Mindset featured in our January 2021 newsletter and found on the AmazeWorks blog under the Hot Topics tab. 
We also recommend referring to the primers on identities and lived experiences included in every grade level AmazeWorks curriculum guide. These primers offer more context, research, and anti-bias educator tips for teaching about various identities. We mentioned in the beginning that in order to create the conditions for belonging, there needs to be equity. The definition of equity we use at Amaze is treatment that is fair and just, taking into account the capacities of individuals while not discriminating because of racial identity, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, religion, ability, or any other aspect of their lived identities. When equity is missing in a classroom, students and teachers will respond with attitudes and behaviors that indicate oppression is present and not equity. It is true that oppression has significant effects on the brain. Research in neuroscience has revealed that the brain responds to perceived social threats in the same manner as threats to survival. When threatened, a stress response from the amygdala of fight, flight, freeze, or appease is triggered. These are automatic survival responses that occur when our familiar coping mechanisms are overwhelmed. Cortisol, the stress hormone, is released, and the oxygen and glucose available to the brain to support cognitive reasoning are decreased. This means we are less likely to reason clearly or take in new learning. It is here that our unconscious biases can, can appear. By being an anti-bias educator, you commit to addressing the lack of equity that has created the oppressions of the past and present. You make space to embrace the challenges and risks in order to create belonging. Paul Gorski, a leading researcher in equity in education said, equity is more than a list of practical strategies. It is a lens and an ideological commitment equity-minded educators examine everything through. And they use this question to do so. How will this impact the most marginalized members of our community? Equity is about prioritizing their interests. Educators following the AmazeWorks Creating the Conditions for Belonging framework focus on the anti-bias education tenets of healthy complex identity development, respect across differences, and the ability to notice, name, and reject bias as the foundation of their equity work. They commit to an understanding of diverse perspectives and lived experiences, and they repeatedly examine their own conscious and unconscious biases. The AmazeWorks curriculum guide contains a multitude of questions for teacher reflection, and they can be found in the introduction, the primers on a variety of identities and lived experiences, and in every AmazeWorks lesson. Feel free to pause this video to reflect on or discuss each of the following reflection questions that focus on your own anti-bias journey. When you were younger, what messages did you receive about people based on the following? Race, ethnicity, social economic status, sexual orientation, family structure, interactions with law enforcement, level of education, and et cetera. How have these early messages helped or harmed your understanding of yourself and your own journey toward understanding respect and empathy across differences? When did you become aware that people with non-dominant identities experience inequity and oppression because social structures and institutions aren't always set up to make room for all? How often do you make time to examine your own biases? Children experience inequities because of the biases they encounter. Messages about who belongs and who doesn't are transmitted to children by who they see in classroom materials, including books, posters, dolls, videos, and guest speakers or visitors as representing the right kind of family, citizen, leader, etc. Children learn who is visible or not, who seems to have power or not, and who is a valued member of the community or who is not, which shapes their understanding of the world. It's really about providing windows and mirrors. There are many activities you can do with students that ask them to share about their own identity, learn about their classmates' identities, and build an understanding of differences. One activity taken from the book, Teaching for Black Lives, a Rethinking Schools publication is called Me Pockets. 
In this activity, each student takes a letter size eight and a half by 11 clear plastic sleeve sheet protector. Ask students to fill the pockets with photos, pictures, drawings, or anything else that will help us to know them more. And it will also help them to be able to see their classmates as well. This activity is like creating a collage. If access to a sheet protector is a consideration, just instruct students to take the front and back of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. When students are finished, they can be compiled into a binder to create a class book. We recommend teachers create their own Me Pocket as an example to share with students before students begin creating their own. Sharing more about who you are with vulnerability and confidence demonstrates for students how to be confident in sharing about their own identities. This activity can be modified and created digitally using a slideshow where each student adds their photos, drawings, etc. to a slide. These slides can be compiled to create a class video or presentation. This activity may reflect the cultural and socioeconomic diversity of the families in your class. Be prepared to supply extra materials such as magazines or show students how to find images or clip art online. Some students put lots of photos in their pockets. Others cut pictures out of magazines or make drawings. This can be an activity that students can do together with family members. The ability to notice, name, and reject bias develops once we better see, understand, and appreciate each other's differences. It is crucial that we help children name and unpack the biased messages so prevalent in our society. Avoidance of talking about race and other differences does not keep children from developing biases. In fact, the opposite is true. Research shows that as few as five explicit conversations about race and other differences lowers bias levels in children. The amount of empathy and compassion that you show as an educator needs to not be overlooked. Making sense of our complicated world with your students can take a toll. Your self-care as an educator is vital to building resilience and expanding your skills as an anti-bias educator. How we focus our attention can be an important piece of self-care. Sometimes it's hard to focus on the positive. Our brains have a negativity bias and we perceive negative stimuli faster and more intensely than positive stimuli, which has led to our survival techniques. This can be exasperated by fatigue and poor self-care. The good news is that negativity bias can be managed and intentionally interrupted if you practice positivity. Intentionally focus on attention on our strengths, helps us to feel better, it boosts our confidence, and helps us respond to challenges more effectively. We recommend taking time each day to focus on the bright spots. You can do this in a number of ways, through meditation, journaling, talking with family and friends, making a list, or writing yourself a note. An activity you can do together is form teams and take turns observing each other. Afterwards, report to each other and only share the things you saw going well in what you observed. You'll be surprised at how much refocusing on the bright spots can feed you and provide you with the energy to keep the equity work going. Your belief in providing an equitable learning environment for your students and your commitment to continual growth as an anti-bias educator are probably the reasons you're watching this video. Thank you for doing the work that you do. We are grateful to be with you on this journey and reach out if you want to continue the conversation. Follow us on social media and sign up for our monthly e-newsletter to receive free lessons, book recommendations, and other helpful resources. Until next time, be well and goodbye.